Say you have to design a bank ATM. How would you go about doing it? How would you write all the programs needed to run a bank ATM in code? The basic thing here is that you need to store information. Store information about bank accounts, about the balance in the bank accounts, how much is being withdrawn and how much is being deposited. And you can do this using a variety of different options. Basically, you're trying to store information, so you could store that information in different ways. The first way is to use dictionaries and lists, or you could use files or databases. Let's cycle through each of these options and see which one works. The first option is to use dictionaries and lists. So to implement a bank ATM in code, first you need to have a list of users or bank account numbers that could be accessed via this particular ATM. Then you would need a dictionary with the account balance in each of these account IDs. Then you would have to maintain a variable with the total amount of cash that this bank could distribute. So until the cash is greater than zero, the ATM can keep dispensing cash. Then you would set up a while loop. This would continuously keep asking. As an input, it would require the account ID and the transaction amount, how much is being withdrawn or deposited from the ATM. This loop and this program would essentially run forever. It would never stop. That is because if the program stops, this list and the dictionary would be completely lost. So day in, day out, without any outage, this program would have to run and keep this list and dictionary in memory and keep track of everything that's happening. The loop would run continuously. That's just a rubbish idea. It would never work. What if there was a power outage? What if there was a disaster? All kinds of reasons. It would never work. No program ever runs forever. You will have to do some sort of maintenance. You might have computer crashes. This is very common. You might have power outages. And with each of these things, you would have to have security for your data. The data should still remain as is even through all of these outages. But if you store your data in dictionaries and lists, once the program stops, all variables are basically lost. Their values are lost. Now, even if there was some way for the variable values to be stored and accessed when a computer crashes, but what if the computer crashed after a user's account has been debited, but the variable for the bank has no cash value has not been credited. So it makes it seem suddenly like cash has appeared or disappeared from nowhere. That's just a rubbish way to run a bank ATM. If any bank ATM really worked like that, there would be all kinds of people trying to game it. Oh, and any bank will have thousands of ATMs, not just one. And all of these will have to talk to each other and maintain the balances correctly. Otherwise, a clever trick would be to withdraw for the same account from several different ATMs simultaneously. So if you withdraw cash several times from different ATMs and they weren't able to talk to each other, you could overdraw the same amount of cash that you have in your account multiple times and no one would be able to catch you. So for all these reasons, using dictionaries and lists to implement a bank ATM is just not a workable idea.
the moral of the story from that particular example was that variables can only exist as long as the program is running once the program exists all variables in it cease to exist so if a variable has to survive beyond the program this is called persistence it has to be saved and you can save a variable either to a file or to a database these are persistent storage types so in a program variable exists in memory which is cleared when the program stops running this is why if you use dictionaries or lists you would have to keep the program running forever files and databases exist on disk which persists that is the data stored in the file or database still exists on the disk even after the program exits so the key thing why dictionaries and lists are a rubbish idea is that they are not persistent storage you need persistent storage for a program like a bank atm in memory variables are advantages in the sense that accessing them and working with them is really fast whereas from files or databases you will have to have a read operation and then a write operation later on to save the data but in memory variables do not have persistent storage so whenever you need persistent storage you need to use files or databases in the bank atm example clearly the storage of data like the account balance in each of the users accounts as well as the total amount of money that the bank has to distribute is really important even beyond the exit of the program so the dictionaries and list solution was a rubbish idea because the storage was not persistent you need persistent storage for the bank atm example and therefore files are a workable idea so let's see what the pros and cons are of using files for implementing a bank atm in code so here's our attempt at implementing a bank atm using files we worked with files before in this class so let's assume that there was a file with a list of all the account ids and another file with the list of account balances so whenever a withdrawal or a deposit happens at the atm it gets added to a queue of transactions which are processed one by one and each of these withdrawals or deposits is processed and used to update the underlying files so there is a program which keeps looking at this queue and processing the transactions and using them to update the files now no, there is not just one atm as we discussed there are thousands of atms which are sending messages to this queue so they are sending details about transactions withdrawals deposits and the amount and which account needs to be debited or credited to this queue and the queue is a combined queue for all of the atms so all of these atms that are sending these messages are called clients and the file system where the messages are processed is called the server so this actually might work this looks like a workable idea because you could maintain this queue of transactions and persistently store the withdrawal or deposit details in the file but it involves processing a lot of files and file processing is notoriously given to errors your reads or writes might fail and this might happen quite often it might also involve combining data across a lot of files and in that case making sure that the format the header and the separator delimiter between all of these files making sure that the columns are all the same 
this would be a humongous task this is because there is no way to enforce that the formats and headers of all these files should be exactly the same if humans are touching the files and the programs are writing to it and they might fail or write partially you never know what might happen oh and we also have not solved for cases like attempts to simultaneously withdraw from multiple atms because these atms are all adding their transactions to a queue so you might withdraw simultaneously from multiple atms and only once the queue gets processed at the server end they would realize that this has happened by which time you could be in the wind so clearly this is still not secure enough for a bank to trust its system to now unlike a dictionaries plus list solution which we already decided would never work at all files along with a client and server model could work it could be made to work but there are a lot of edge cases to be considered and the program could become really complex and there would still be some uncertainty in how the things would play out not just that it's just not very convenient to process a lot of files with different headers and it would make the program really cumbersome as well as not elegant so a lot of engineers were facing the same kind of problems so engineers and computer science folks went off and studied all the downsides to using file switcher systems in situations like this where you needed a lot of stability and you were handling a lot of data and they designed software that systematically eliminated all the problems that exist with file systems and that is exactly how database management systems or dbms as they're called in short came into existence databases were designed specifically so that they could handle a large amount of data all the problems that are involved in handling all of this data and storing it as well as reading and writing it in a proper manner were considered when databases were designed here are all the considerations that were taken into account correctness flexibility concurrent access and the semantics of how the data are related to each other all databases guarantee four types of correctness right out of the box these are the four important properties of database design and they are called asset properties the types of correctness are atomicity consistency isolation and durability these four together are called asset properties we'll not go much into what exactly the asset properties are but do know that because of these asset properties you can really trust and rely on the correctness of how the data is stored in databases databases allow programmers a lot of flexibility they can change data in the databases without changing the code whereas if you were using excel files and each of the files had a different format or header then you would have to write different pieces of code to handle each of those different types of files but with databases you with the same piece of code you can access the data in different ways databases are designed such that large number of simultaneous reads and writes can happen without compromising the correctness of the data so again the access is designed such that the asset properties are maintained this is basically done by locking the data so that nobody can read it while something is being written to it the other thing which was not even possible with files and comes into play with databases is enabling data semantics 
that is relationships between data could be specified easily and they could be enforced as well whereas in files if you had to say column one of file a must match column three of file b it's really not easy to enforce this the flexibility that this code provides is done through sql or structured query language it's a way to access data in databases without actually changing the code which performs the queries concurrent access as we already mentioned is done through read and write logs on the data and data semantics is enforced by putting in constraints we'll talk more about what these constraints are and how they are enforced when we go deeper into databases for now let's see how to implement a bank atm using a database which guarantees all these properties out of the box here's how this would work you would have a bunch of different atms just as we had in the previous case these as we already mentioned before act as clients then you would have a layer which is called a server which accepts requests from the clients that is it accepts data regarding the transactions whether they are withdrawals or deposits and what is the amount which account are they affecting and so on it also maintains a list of users pulled from the database it accepts the transactions and updates the database with the changes it also talks to the user if needed so behind the server in this case there is another layer called the database whereas in the file system if you remember there was just a server which was handling the files but here there is a database where data is arranged in the form of tables and there are relationships defined between these different tables based on rows and columns so whenever there are specific actions like a user withdrawing or depositing money or closing an account there would be a specific set of writes or operations that would happen on the database and specific rows and columns that would be updated added or deleted and there are lots and lots of safety checks and backups so that none of these operations would affect the correctness of the data the balance in the account of the user all of these atms can simultaneously talk to the server and the server can simultaneously send those requests to the database as well and the data would still be consistent or correct because of the way the database is designed this is because of the concurrent access that the database allows and the correctness that it maintains the server reads data from the database processes it in memory and then writes it back to the database and the data which is stored in the database server is always persistent therefore of all the three options that we discussed dictionaries or lists using files or database we saw that dictionaries and lists are just a not workable idea using files can be made to work but it's just a lot of work and using databases just works because they have been specifically designed 